All right, guys, we're going to be talking about a couple of different things. Lists and dictionaries, we've been talking about lists for quite a while. Dictionaries are a pretty new topic. I think I've only mentioned them once. And we're also going to be talking about creating our own classes because these are classes. We've been using classes for a long time, but we really haven't talked much about them, what it means that they are a class. So let's go ahead and open up our documentation here. Lists and dictionaries. Well, everything we've got here is a class, with the possible exception of the primitive data types, um, integers, and floats. Right. Let's go ahead and open up idle here. All right. One of the uh, exam questions was, which command will give you a list of properties? It's the dir command, right? If I want to find out what you can do, <clears throat> with a list. I type dir list and it tells me all the functions and properties of, of that list, of a list class, right? If I want to see all the properties of a dictionary, d-i-c-t, it'll list those. It's kind of like help, so it helps a little bit different. If I type help list, it gives me more documentation than just the list, than the simple, you know, listing here, right? Gives me a whole bunch of information about it, which is useful. So you have help, but DIR was the question that it wanted on the, the on the exam, and that was taken from that was taken from the uh, chapter quizzes on MindTap. Well, anyways, we can create our own classes, you know. So a list class, if we do DIR list, we see that it's got things like append. We can append to a list or clear, we can clear out the list. Let's play with that, let's make a new list, right? I'm gonna just call it capital L, cause that's easy to type, right? And I can do L.append and I'm gonna append a number to it. L.append and I'm gonna add another number to it. And then if I print it out, right, we see that it's got two numbers. If we, let's append some more things to it, right? There, now when I, Print it out. The number 200 appears in it once, and the number 100 appears in it twice. Let's go ahead and make a file that matches what we're doing here. I'm going to lecture L. That sounds right. If it's not, I'll correct it. Oh, I changed my comment color to gray. I don't know, fix that, change it to darker. If you want to change the colors of your stuff on the screen, I was I was playing around with this to see if it if, if it was easier to read because the green, you know, and the red are pretty bright, but I need to change it back. So I'm gonna to go to preferences on the Mac, it's under the idle menu. On the PC it's somewhere over here under options or something like that. So what you do is you click highlights and then you click the kind of thing you want to change the color for. In this case, that's color. That's the, uh, the comments right there, right? And maybe not gray comments, maybe another color. Why is it not letting me change it? Okay, ah, choose color for, right? And so I can pick which color I want for my comments. And then when I click apply, we're back in the saddle. Well, that looks horrible. I'm just gonna go back to the classic theme, right? So built-in classic, all right. All right, now we're back to, to normal, right? Make this look like a doc. We're gonna be talking about classes lists and dictionaries. So here's our example of a dictionary, right? We're going to make an empty dictionary like that. Oops, sorry, that's a list. If you want to do a dictionary, uh, I believe you use the curly braces instead. So that's making an empty list. Now let's append a couple things to it. I'm going to append the number 100 to it, the number 200 to it, and the number 100 to it again. 
And then I'm going to print the list out just to see what it looks like. We already know what it looks like. We ran it, right? Now I'm curious about how many times the number 100 appears on my list. So A is equal to L dot count 100. Please tell me the number of occurrences of the value specified, right? So that's what that does. B equals L dot count 200, right? And C equals L dot count 300. When we are done, the number 100 appears twice, right? So if we printed out A, A would be 2. 200 appears in the list once. And 300 appears no times, right? So, you know, two 100s appear in the list. One 200 appears in the list. And no 300s appear in the list. Isn't the English language weird? When you use singular and when you use plural. Anyways, okay. I mean, we could just prove that by printing it out, right? A comma B comma C. We'll see it say 210. Right? So 2, 1, and 0. So that's a list, right? What do you do with a list? You just create, right, a series of items. Like if you want somebody to enter a series of uh, test scores or something, right? Now, there are also things called arrays in other languages. And an array is just a fixed length list. <clears throat> it's not how they define them in those other languages. Some languages don't have lists. They have arrays. But they look like this, right? You create the list, but you specify, you give it an initialized set of items, right? So other languages would think of that as being an array. But once you create an array in those languages, it is fixed in length, right? An array is fixed in length. This language doesn't have arrays. All it has are lists because you can use lists for everything that an array can do and more. And the opposite is not true. What's the problem with having something that's fixed in length? <clears throat> well, since this is three items long, since it's fixed in length, supposedly, if this was a language that did arrays, then you can't append anything to it, right? or you can't delete the two from the middle of it. The length is fixed. So Python doesn't support arrays, but we can mimic them, right? We can create lists and pre-initialize them full of data like that, or we could create an empty array by doing this, right? Fill it full of zeros, for example. So now we could print out a and we can print out B and we will see that list A has got a 1, 2, and a 3 in it and list B has three zeros in it. All right, just like that, right? But I'm going to add a comment here. You know, if you've used other programming languages that do support arrays and when we uh, taught fundamentals, we pretended that Python lists were arrays, right? But if you've used C, C++, Java, or whatever, Python does not support arrays, which are, in effect, fixed length lists, where once created, the list's length cannot change. But we can simulate arrays if we wanted to. with those two syntaxes. That is the same as doing something like this in Java. I want to make an array of integers. I'm going to call it B, or BA for um, B array, equals new int subscript 3, how you would do it in Java. Here's how you would do it in C++ int ba subscript 3. How you would do it in C++. 
We don't care about those languages in this class. So we would do BA, whoopsie, come back, equals 0, 0, 0. That's kind of cheesy, though, right? Because what if it was supposed to be 100 elements long? Cheesy way <laughs> of doing it, right? Here's a better way. BA is equal to 3 times that, right? Now that's to create an empty array, right? And by empty array, I mean uninitialized. <clears throat> We're not pre-filling it with data like we did here, right? But you could always pre-fill an array with data, right? So here's how you would do that in one of those languages. Say you wanted to make a string array of colors, right? Here's how you would do it in C++, and then you would list the items that you wanted. Red, comma, blue comma green that's how you do it in c plus plus java is actually just exactly the same except you move these guys over here right in python colors is equal to you know and then you put those items inside the square braces red comma blue comma green now again Python doesn't have arrays. We are just using syntaxes that use lists as arrays, right? Meaning that we can go ahead and append. So we can change the length of the list, right? Colors.append, we want to add purple to our list, right? We can do that. You want to delete something from the middle of it? You can do that. Okay. So let's make a list full of days of the week, right? Days is equal to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We work five days a week, right? And then we're going to figure out our sales for those days. But we're going to ask the user, right? We want to ask, what were the sales for Monday? What were the sales for Tuesday? What were the sales for Wednesday? What were the sales for Thursday? And what were the sales for Friday, right? So we need five of them, right? But what if later on we went and added Saturday and Sunday? We now have to work seven days a week rather than five. So let's create a num days variable, which is equal to the length of the days list, right? So right now that'll equal five, right? Well, why didn't we hard code it to five? Why didn't we just put five there? Because like I said, maybe we're going to go back in and add Saturday and Sunday, or maybe we're going to change it to 30, you know, one days for, you know, every day in the month, something like that. So now we need to do num days times 